name is Ashley Polskamp. This is my persuasive speech. My claim for my speech is there is a need to insert and enforce a law that makes wearing a helmet mandatory when riding a motorcycle or operating it. A person is driving down the road, obeying the rules of the road, when a motorcyclist crosses the center line and hits them head on and dies on impact because he wasn't wearing a helmet. The surviving driver does not only have to live with the fact that the motorcyclist died because of the impact of his or her car, he or she also has to worry about the visions that the five-year-old boy in the back seat will have due to what he has just witnessed. There is a need to insert a law that requires motorcyclists to wear helmets. This is relevant because all of us have experienced the fatality of motorcycle accidents, whether it be firsthand from a loved one or on the news. I have researched the information and policies that came from motorcycle accidents and motorcycle laws, which I will now discuss the need for this policy, the plan for this policy, and the practicality of this policy or potential law. First, let's discuss the reasoning behind the need for this law. The need for this law and the reason why it is so dramatic is because there are too many fatalities resulting from motorcycle accidents. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as the NHTSA, on February 12, 2006 and 2004 alone, 4,000 motorcycle fatalities were recorded, which is 8.6 of all traffic-related fatalities. Also, according to D. M. Sawson, 1992, among all motorcycle fatalities have dropped from 71% in 2000 to 58% in 2004. According to S.P. Baker, the declining use of helmets is due to the argument that helmet laws infringe on human rights. According to the American Journal of Public Health, November 2007, the states that repealed the helmet law experienced significantly more fatalities. People believe that they should be able to choose whether they want to wear a helmet or not. Frankly, it is a decision that affects more than just the person driving the motorcycle. A plan behind this type of law could be to make a law that requires the motorcyclist to wear a helmet while operating or riding a motorcycle. According to R.G. Almer, there have been many changes in the motorcycle helmet law since 1966. It has been put into, repla into and replaced by the federal government and individual state governments. The plan will save lives, and the peace of mind for others will be at peace. According to D.F. Prusser, 2000, motorcycle-related deaths increased by 21% in Arkansas and 30% in Texas after the motorcycle helmet law was repealed. How will this policy help to solve this problem? The practicality of this law is because increased security will help America become safer. According to the NHTSA 2004, motorcycle helmets were shown to be 37% more effective in their tests, proving that for every 100 people that die in motorcycle accidents, 37 would have been saved if they would have worn a helmet. According to JD, because the policy is easy to enforce also, according to JD Graham 1986, the helmet law can be enforced by, every, by very similar to the seatbelt law. The operator would be pulled over and ticketed just as an automobile operator would be ticketed for not wearing a seatbelt. There is a need to insert and enforce a law that requires motorcyclists to wear a helmet. Think back to the situation I explained at the beginning of the speech concerning the driver and their five-year-old son riding in the back. Accidents happen, but they can be prevented. It is hard to stop fatalities from happening but it doesn't have to take much to keep the numbers down or to be more manageable some. Wearing a helmet is a simple way to protect the bodies and peace of mind of everyone around the road. While, also, while driving on a motorcycle, wearing a helmet should always become a major um, consideration to all drivers. It increases their well-being and helps them to maintain and also possibly live a longer life when being on the road.